Okay. We're good to go. Uh, I am uh, thrilled to be joined by uh, the great uh, John J.R. Robinson. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, John is, uh, I'm sure, as most of you know, the most recorded drummer of all time. Uh, played for an incredible array of artists, too many to mention, but we'll reel off a couple. Michael Jackson, Madonna, Lionel Richie, the We Are The World uh, right. soundtrack, everything like that. And, and many films as well. Uh, just a, a phenomenal array. I downloaded your PDF of everything you've recorded. I think it was some 14, 15 pages. So, yeah, uh, well. Um, <laughs> Um, absolutely remarkable. Um, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. You've just come from uh, London Drum Show yes, on the yeah. weekend. Now you're here in Drum Depot, Cardiff. Uh, how have things been so far? How was London? London was hectic, as always. Uh, good. Um, you know, I had left, uh, I live in Thousand Oaks, California, so we had a very tragic last week, you know, with the mass shooting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, none of my kids or any, you know, and the friends were, were there. It was mostly a college crowd thing. but. The next day, I had to fly to London, mm -hmm. and then all the fires started. So it was like, oh my God, so my house is fine. Uh, there's a lot of drummers that live out in my area. Right. Yeah, I mean, a lot. I mean, all the drummers live out there. And um, it's, uh, you know, some some of the guys had to evacuate the house. So there was a lot of stuff on the brain before coming to, you know, I'm flying to London and stuff. But, uh, you know, they worked me hard. Uh, we played last night, and mm -hmm. I did a master class in the morning yesterday and uh, then did my major performance last night. I know that you still uh, fit in some teaching and you go on your website as well and there's some PDFs of tracks you play that people can download and things like that. So to the educational side, is, is still something that's very important to you, something you enjoy doing? I think that's why, I mean, I still, I've been, been doing these for years, but you know, I don't make it a living or, or a habit to uh, always do you know, drum clinics. And so uh, the whole point is for education, mm. you know, to. If I can teach one person something, mm -hmm. and they take it out of here and apply it, and it works, then then you know I did my job. Uh, I was uh, very lucky to, to watch the sound check earlier before the show, and uh, it's just just uh, amazing to hear uh, you play because I mean the, the, those Mike albums are sort of my favourite top five albums of all time. Oh, and that nice. off the wall album is just. Oh, uh, well, we're not going to uh, do that. But uh, no, no, no. Well, no, no. <laughs> But I'm just, just amazed to hear that. I, I'm just fascinated, and I heard you talk uh, in, in another interview about the importance of feel, uh, particularly with studio drumming and how your feel has obviously translated so well for so many of these sessions. Is yeah. that something you could just talk a little bit about and, and, and specify a little bit what you, what you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's something that I guess when I first started doing sessions, even in Boston, mm -hmm. before I moved to Los Angeles with Rufus, um, uh, I, I knew that I was kind of putting something into the music that may be special or different. And, and it's, I think it's important for the kids to know that, that it, you know, they, they need to develop their own style somehow. Mm. And how do you do that? And you know, we obviously listen to the masters, all the people that came before me. And, you know, I, and I still greatly listen to uh, uh, Bebop and Mainstream, you know, Philly mm -hmm. Joe and, and Joe Jones and Sonny Payne and uh, just all, all sorts of just classic old drummers because they were there first. Mm. There was something about what they were doing. And so you take that and you don't steal it, mm. you borrow it. Yeah. Put a twist on it. Yes. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, then, and then you apply it within your own uh, style. Yeah. So what I did. I mean, I, you know, strangely enough, when I joined Rufus and Chaka Khan in 1978, I was coming out of a live band where, you know, and Billy Cobham was one of my big influences, and, you know, we all wanted to play just muscular and big and powerful and quick, yeah. like Billy Cobham, because it was just so, it was so awestruck, it was like, so powerful, and, um, uh, and then I started getting into this rehearsal situation, and you know, I joined the band right away. I mean, I didn't even have to audition, kind of. And, and we go in and just start jamming and stuff. And, and the guys go, don't play that <laughs> I go, what are you talking about? All that fancy yeah. Don't play that. Just lay down the groove. I go, really? Yeah. I go, man, I've just been training at Berkeley and, and playing and all this stuff. Try, they're trying to get to this, you know, this really high, what we appear as, drummer level yes. of you know, that, that thing, 
And in reality, what's most important is to play for the song. Mm. And, I, and I, I learned that. And it was your playing on the, the Rufus record, Master Jam? The, for all, the first record was called Numbers, Num and then, ABC Dunhill. And then, which led to, where you worked with Quincy. That and, led, and led to Quincy, yeah. Led to Quincy, and then obviously being on Off the Wall. And that, what was it about your playing that sort of led Quincy to say, hey, this is the guy I That would be a to. question for Q, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> Here, hold on, let me call him. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, he apparently, and that's why that first Rufus record was really important, mm. because even though Shaka wasn't a part of it, I mean, we had, I even brought Freddie Hubbard in on that record. It was, uh, it was kind of everybody's, you know, first attempt at a solo record. The band had never had a solo record, mm. and um, we, uh, we did pretty good. So I think... Uh, you know, management played in the record, and, and they go, oh, this is, you know, John Robinson, he's a new drummer in town, he's with Rufus, and he goes, you don't have to use him, mm -hmm. you can use one of the studio guys in L.A., and he goes, oh, no, no, I, I like him, plus he went to Berkeley, right? Yeah, and he went. And he went to Berkeley, yeah. Schillinger, Berkeley, in those days, and and he goes, well, yeah, no, I like him, yeah, so that was it. What is that like? I'm just fascinated. What is that like? At 24, I believe you were when you did that record. Uh, uh, about yeah, 24. Years of yeah, age. I so, joined Rufus at 23. Yeah, so it's a similar age, I guess, to Michael as well when you were recording that off the wall. Michael was younger. Slightly younger. But yeah. to go into that environment uh, and play on the whole album, apart yes. from one track that doesn't have drums. Yes. Um, <laughs> how, uh, how do you sort of deal with that mentally as much as anything, sort of going in? Or is it just because you've been doing the Shaka Khan stuff, the Rufus stuff? Hey, this is, I can do this. That's kind of how it was. Yeah. I mean, and you know, first of all, I had, I had unbelievable bands in Boston. I had several show bands and with, you know, with great front singers and uh, that I helped put together. And, and so I was already prepared for mm -hmm. uh, all this music. You know, it's like uh, all Michael songs uh, from the Jacksons, we played them all. You know, so I, I had targeted kind of that. I also knew all the Rufus stuff from the previous records. Mm -hmm. And I go, man, I really like this concept. It's a mixed race band, it's a rock and roll band, it's an R&B band, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. So I kind of like that. So then coming into the Michael situation, um, I guess, you know, it wasn't like, here, let me try to stump me. Yeah. Uh, it was just the way the, the collaborative issue was with everybody adjoining at the same time or mm -hmm. conforming at the same time. And you were you were in the in the studio with him recording with with the wine bottles as well. And yeah, we, the Michael and I, or I call him Mike. <laughs> God bless him. He's a, he was a great guy. Um, we talk about layering. Yeah. You know, instead of just you know, because I like to layer the drums from the build a house from the foundation up, drum set, bass, guitar, keyboards, uh, vocals, strings, pads, yeah. high crap, <laughs> percussion or wherever you're putting it. And uh, so we talk about, oh, you know, I really like wine bottles. And I go, well, I do too. So, uh, well, well, let's collect some. Okay, so yeah. we collect some and I bring them in and, and uh, uh, you know, find something to hit the wine bottle on and uh, hit on the wine bottle and, oh, that sounds great. Here, here. And I'm like, let me hear yours. Oh, that's great. So, so finally, on, get to the story uh, working day and night yeah um, we get the track tracks already done and then like finally we come in it goes Bruce Bruce Sweeney, the engineer goes all right you two it's time for you to do your bottles and he's a big Swedish dude you know? yeah and uh, so we go out in this in this room together and I don't know, some sort of a multi-pattern mic and we're sitting across from each other and it, 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 I it just in my brain, it was really surreal mm. because it was like a little bit of sunlight shining in. It was what? late in the afternoon. I'm sitting across from, from Michael Jackson and we're playing wine bottles. And uh, all of a sudden, the track starts. And it's like, you know, <laughs> some part, I don't know whose part is what. And uh, he's playing something or two stack, two stack, whatever. And uh, like, you know, getting it out of the first chorus, I, I think, right, and going into the second verse. And I'm sweating, mind you, and my wine bottle shatters all over my left arm. Oh. And, and so we stop playing. And he stuck, goes, oh, Jayon. And he starts picking glass on my hair and my <laughs> sweaty arm. And I'm like, oh, 
this is really kind of interesting. So, <laughs> so and all of a sudden the talk back goes on, and Bruce Sweeney goes, "Hey, what are you two guys doing in there?" I go, "The one wine bottle's broke." I go, "I go, we'll get another bottle. Come on, we got to finish this overdub." <laughs> Click. I go, and I just look at him, and that was it. <laughs> Michael was picking glass out of my arm. Yeah, what an unusual uh, situation. Yeah. It was strange. It was strange, but. I guess I would have done the same for him. Indeed. Well, yeah. Yeah. And that speaks to the relationship, I'm sure. So that means I was playing to the bottle too hard. <laughs> playing the bottle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it worked out okay in the end, well, I guess. Sold a few, few records. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got to, got to ask you about that, that Phil that started rock with you. Yeah. Uh, such an iconic uh, Phil. Um, how, how, does that, how does that come about? Is that just from you? It, it was uh, mostly from me. Um, uh, first of all, the song was written by Rod Temperton. Mm -hmm. And Rob has just wrote so many great songs, yeah. and I got to play on a lot of them. And um, uh, he had a demo, and his demos were really basic. Like, I mean, he wrote a song called Off the Wall. He wrote Thriller, yeah. so, but it was always these parts that were intertwined. And he, I don't know, he had some sort of a fill into, I can think he was in a uh, Lynn drum machine or something in those yeah. days. But uh, I go, ah. And so Quincy cast all sorts of players for different tunes mm -hmm. on that record. But I, I was the mainstay mm. through the whole record. So on that particular day, we were doing Rock With You. Mm. Little did we know uh, it would be the best song ever. Uh, but it was my band, Rufus, with yeah. Bobby Watson and Hawk Walensky. Oh. Then we had David Williams playing guitar. And um, so we're like three takes in. Yeah. And there's absolutely no magic. What? There's no magic. And, um, and I'm looking up, you know, we're in Westlake B, it's a small room, and I'm looking, you can see the booth, and those guys are like looking down, and I go, oh, So pretty soon Quincy gets up and walks and stands right here, and then Rod gets up and comes and stands right here, smoking his red Marlboro, and it's like, like oh, shit. and Quincy looks at me and he goes, yeah, can you come up with a fill, an intro fill? that everybody for all time will identify with this song. Wow. And I go, and the, the guys are going, oh. You know, because we, we weren't really, there was some magic missing mm. on those previous takes. It would be interesting actually to pull those takes out and see what they sounded yeah. like. Yeah. Like one day maybe I will if I get permission. But uh, so I go, yes I can. <laughs> and then Rod didn't say yeah. And, 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 and uh, they go back and sit down. And Did I'm, you know what you were going to play at that point? No. no. And, and uh, I knew in my head that I don't like, and maybe I'll probably talk about that a little bit, I don't like straight sixteenths and triplets together. So I combined them a little mm -hmm. bit and made kind of a syncopated, almost a marching fill. Yeah. But it's syncopated between sixteenth notes and triplets. Yeah. And, uh, and then everybody goes, all right, let's do it, go. And I hear four clicks and bam, there yeah. it was. Yeah. And then and the whole song was just energized from the get go, and that yes. was the take. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Bobby just played his butt off. If you, yeah. His bass line is so iconic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not like a repetitive bass line. It's a, a piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Um, I won't ask you to play it now unless you. <laughs> can you do it? Oh. Here, I'll do it on in net. They said never play on your mom's furniture, but. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, thank you for doing that. Uh, um, you've got a clinic to get to, so we'll, we'll, we'll push through things here now. Uh, just very briefly, the, the We Are The World uh, thing as well. Um, what a phenomenal record and, uh, and yeah. a part in history to be, to be a part of as wow. well. Just your memories of that, sort of if you can boil them down. Yeah, and we, that was done in, in twofold. Mm. We recorded it a week before they brought in the singers. Right, yeah. In a completely separate studio called Landshare, mm. which was owned by Kenny Rogers. Mm. And we, which I used to work there all the time. I, I did so many records there, uh, like, you know, Through the Fire with Shaka and mm. all sorts of, I did Kenny Rogers records mm. there and just all sorts of weird mm. shit. But uh, uh, we were called to do that. And I didn't realize what a media circus it was gonna be for the recording also. Mm. And so I get there and I've got the, you know, the drums are set up kind of a cockeyed way and Lewis Johnson is there, and Greg Finlegans is there, and it's just us three cut that. And um, but there was fifty media people there, 
running cameras, snapping, you know, analog. It's yeah. all analog in those days. And, and this noise and noise and noise. And, you know, so we kind of clear some people and we go and we're around the piano with Lionel and Michael and and getting the arrangement together. And uh, I'm learning and I just do, you know, I, I tune that snare really fat. Yeah. And, um, uh, and finally, Quincy's in the booth. And again, there's the cue from Quincy and he's looking at me and he's going, come on, hurry the f up. And so I, he goes like, we gotta get this show on the road. And in other words, I'm running the show. Yeah. So I said to everybody in the room, I go, get the f out. <laughs> I go, give us 15 minutes. Yeah. Let us get the track and then you guys can come back in. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh. So they all polished out and I go, all right, let's go. Yeah. And then we got it. I mean, that went down pretty quick, but it was yeah. a long tune. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, 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 I think there's some footage online of the, the vocals being done uh, in that session a week later. You can find yeah, well, the guys and was, yeah. Well, yeah, they're working out the demo vocals, and yeah. then and then then it just became producing. Yeah. Who's going to sing what, and and the transition, and then who's going to go to the bridge? Yeah. And then it went back again and stuff. So, and then I was actually asked to be in the vocal section. Oh. And Quincy goes, do you want to be in the, in in the chorus? Because I, I I was always a choral singer. Yeah. Back in Iowa and. Uh, I almost felt like I don't want to do this. I'm already playing drums, yeah. and um, you know, if, it, if I was like looking for that kind of attention, I may have done it. Yeah. You know, because freaking Dan Aykroyd was in there. You know, <laughs> like, okay, he can sing. Not, I mean, you know, not really. So, but you know, then the rest was history. I think it yeah. sold like 60 million units. Yeah, uh, I think that, yeah, it's remarkable. Like a yeah. lot. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Um, I, I can talk to you uh, for hours, like I said, you're a phenomenal career, I, you have a clinic to get to. What, uh, apart from tonight, uh, what, is, what is going on next? Next, well, I mean, I'm finishing out the UK. Yeah. So, where am I at? Bur Birmingham, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Manchester, Wednesday. London at BIMM, uh, Thursday. Yep. Fly back to Los Angeles, go right into a PBS special with one of the singers that's with us, a Shalea, mm -hmm. uh, then a session on Tuesday. Exhale. Uh, I just finished a, uh, a television pilot, uh, okay. which um, it's called Band Together, which I'm organizing high school rock bands. So it'll be like, like a reality show. Yeah. And uh, you know we're, we're working on that. And doing yeah. that, um, I just scored a motion picture called The Bronx Boys. Okay. So I'm delving into other avenues that I've always done. Yeah. Um, in, in addition, I'm still playing drums with David Foster. Yep. Uh, which we go out, uh, we go out on the road in February, mm -hmm. and then we're going to tour Canada in the summer. And it'd be nice to get him back, get him to Europe. Uh, he's never really been here, so uh, don't know about that. But and then the other good news is that the X band Rufus and Chaka Khan was nominated again for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and this is our third nomination, and we. We're like that dog that's outside the door that nobody will let in. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll get in this time and then we would have to get back together for a short stint. Yeah, so yeah. That's good. kind of like partially that and I may do another film in 019. Wow. So it's it's just full throttle. It's full throttle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm still raising a 17 and a half year old, the younger one. So. Wow. Yeah. Like, of course, I'm not there, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, at least they couldn't they could see you anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Stay um, out of trouble. And then Gia, you've been with uh, DW a long time, Pisces now as well. Yeah, and, Pisces uh, the most. Uh, yeah. And uh, Remo, you know, since I was an embryo. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, I'm also innovative percussion, which is, uh, it's, you know, it's been mostly a, a marching stick company that's now developed into drum set sticks and unbelievable. I've got some weird brushes they make now and yeah. great company. And uh, they co-sponsored also at London Drum Show. So uh, just, uh, you know, Trying to you know stay afloat and do the right thing, yeah. man. Um, I'm gonna let you get on, but uh, thanks so much. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure and a privilege to speak to you. Thanks so much. Have a great show. My pleasure. Thanks, man. See you guys.